Hey, what's been happening here? This looks interesting. Introduction to sequences. What's a sequence anyway? Let's have a look at these two uh, drawings here. One is uh, sort of a, a pattern solving problem and the other one is a, well, a, a building type problem, I guess. I've drawn a few little bricks here. I guess you can see why I'm not an art teacher. But let's have a look at these two uh, situations. Can you see what's happening? In the first one over here, in the first drawing, call it one, we have one. And then in the second drawing, we have three. And then in the third drawing, we have six. Then in the fourth drawing, how many have we got? Ten. What's happening here? In the fifth drawing, let's add them up. I think we've got 13, have we? Got five, no, I've got more than that. Five, nine, 12, 14, 15. And so on, now pitch to six. Hey, what's happening? Well, we call this a sequence of numbers to describe what's happening in this puzzle or a pattern here. Can you see uh, a, a pattern in the uh, sequence of numbers coming from here to here? And then from here to here, oh, the gap is two, and then it's three. This is interesting stuff. Then it's four, then it's five. What do you reckon? This one, the gap should be six. It should be then, therefore, 21. And you're going to count it up? Yes, there are 21 dots there. This is interesting stuff, seeing if we can detect how to create this pattern through a sequence of numbers. And we're going to look at how to create that sequence, how to predict what might happen further on. Now, that's all very well to say, well, I'm not into puzzles, so I don't care about that. Well, come down here and let's build something. If you're building this uh, little podium or whatever it is here, then can you see that we're starting off with one brick, then two bricks, then three bricks, etc. Now, if you wanted to work out the total number of bricks in a certain height podium, hey, you might be able to work out how many rows you've got and predict down here uh, what would the number of um, bricks in that last row. Because I think the row number is equal to the bricks. The number of bricks is going up by one here. Interesting stuff. And what we want to do is to say, well, can we develop this area of mathematics called sequences and series so that uh, we will be able to predict and use mathematics to work out the next entry or the sum of all the entries. If you wanted to build this, you want to add these up and find out how many bricks you might need. So, are you interested? Hope so. Let's go down and have a look at what we're going to do. So I've got some sequences here. 6, 12, 8, 24, 30, this one here. And it stops there. So this is called a finite sequence. Not like the ones we had up the top there where you could actually keep going with the pattern. What about this one here? It's got a little K in there. It's suggesting what? That you've got powers of three. Three to the K. Well, what's K here? Three to the one. K is one. Three squared. K is two there. So this one is infinite. You could keep going and putting different Ks in there and generate heaps of them. That powers of three. And this is interesting because this is the first time you've seen a formula. A formula to actually describe how to get the next member of the sequence. Interesting stuff. Here's another one here. What is this? This is finite. Why? It could be infinite because it's got this formula one on I squared, so it's got a formula already, but it tells you how many I's to put in. I is one, two, three, ten. Do you want to play? Let's have a look at 
what they what, what that would be one on i squared one on one squared would be the first term then one on two squared and then one on three squared and we keep going but it's finite because it says we stop at the number 10 so we go up to one on 10 squared interesting now isn't it to analyze how perhaps you might get we'll come back and look at this one how you might get a formula for the first one but these two others have both got their formulas attached so we can generate uh, a number of terms okay and then uh, there's a general statement here we could call it the set C here we've used in these last two this curly bracket which means the set of set of terms generated like that and uh, you can abbreviate it to here the set of terms of the form BN now this BN means that is not a times that's a super a subscript sorry underneath submarine underneath the water subscript underneath the script line so under there so subscript meaning this is the number of the term of the term not the size of it so if you say uh, b3 is 1 on 3 squared you'd be talking about this little dude up here it's the third term and what's its size 1 on 3 squared okay so um, that's an interesting introduction to some ner terminology there we can actually label terms so if we called uh, this one up here this sequence let's call its terms b as well then that 12 is b2 okay get the idea of it we're starting to build up a little bit of language and jargon here to uh, actually um, describe our patterns so what is this it is the fifth term is it a b5 is equal to 30 okay so it's just creeping up on this now developing some mathematical approaches to describing uh, what we want to do and maths is very nice like that uh, it's a nice neat way instead of saying uh, uh, the fifth term is 30 maths is a lot neater than that but there it is in a nice mathematical sentence all right okay let's go down and see what we might do just to do some little exercises on this now so if we come down here here's a little example here to start with so uh, th this is uh, taken now from uh, Pearson's uh, textbook for the IB for this new course so you might have that handy and follow through in there as well so here we are here's the question can you generate the first five terms and the 50th term if the sequence set of bn such that bn follows that formula so in other words to get any nth term the number of the term you get two and you subtract one over that number squared that's so a formula telling you if you're in let's go down to this one if you're looking for the second term uh, there it is the second term what do you do it's two take one on the number n which was the second term that number there squared you get the hang of it let's try and find the 50th term here it is down the bottom the 50th term is the formula says it's two minus one on n squared one on 50 squared so it's a matter of substituting the n value into the formula and finding what the term is this is called an explicit formula it tells you exactly what it is what the term is as a function of n okay so writing it down the, f the term is equal to 2 take 1 on the number of the term squared it's explicit it's clear it's precise like an explicit statement in graphing what would it be something similar y equals 2 take 1 on x squared 
It's ex uh, an explicit statement telling you exactly how to produce y from x. Same idea. Okay, we don't use y as an x because we don't want to confuse it with the Cartesian system. So uh, we're going to use n's and bn or an or the, the ib like mu n. They like that one, mu, Greek uh, letter, and uh, you would write this as mu n equals 2 take 1 on n squared. So we'll go with Pearson's here for the minute, but just keep in mind that the IB uh, like that uh, mu in sequences. Okay, let's go now and look at a, a different way of actually generating uh, members of a sequence. Let's come down here now. And here's a little one. Find the first five terms and the 20th term, in the sequence called a B's. B1 is 5. Oh, what's this business going on here? Bn is 2 times B. Well, let's, I'm going to write this over here because I want to try and understand this now. What's going on here? Okay, it's not giving you an explicit formula. It's somehow connecting the term you want. What is this? This is 2 times, what would you say that was? Bn take 1. Oh, that's the term before, isn't it? It's the term before Bn because you've got n take 1 in that hole. So this is actually saying to get any term Bn, I've got to get 2 and times it by bn take 1, the term before bn, plus 3. Hey, this is a bit of a disadvantage, because to get bn, I must know the term before. I must know the term before the term I want. The term before. Ah, OK, well, let's try and do it. Oh, they've given us b1. I've given us the first term. So let's come down here. So B2, you would stick B1, the term before, add 3 and then double it. So you must know the first term here to get started. And once you're started, you can use it in the next one. So B3 is B2 plus 3 double. So you've got to stick the previous one in that hole there. And can you see it? This type of formula requires the term before, and it's called a recursion formula. Recursive or recursion formula. Recursive, because it recurs. Recurs. Mind you, it's not reoccur. A lot of people say that. It occurs again, but when we say it occurs again, we say it's, it's recur, it recurs. So it's all linked. The pattern recurs over and over. It's linked back, if you like. Linked back to a preceding term. Linked back. You could think of it like that. OK, and so you go on. Once you get a term, to get the next term, you've got to work on it. OK, so you could generate all those terms. Now, the problem here is, Pearson has explained this nicely, you're a bit stuck to get the 20th term, so you'd actually, actually have to put in all the terms all the way here up to the 19th, B19. You'd need to have that because B20 is equal to what? 2 times the 1 before B19 plus 3. This is a difficult way of generating uh, terms. Well, we can program the calculator to do it, but we want to do it ourselves. Uh, the technology is just going to support our mathematical understanding. So um, we would like to change it to an explicit form, wouldn't we? Can we write it as bn equals 2 times n squared or something? Wouldn't that be a better way? Well, hmm... That's interesting. Do you, you want to uh, play with something that we've done before? Let's have a look now and look at this example. You know, back on the uh, first example up there, I gave you uh, this one. No, actually, that came out of Pearson's as well. 
So here we had this sequence and it stopped there. Let's imagine it kept going. First of all, can you see what's going on? What's the connection? First term to second term, I added six. Ooh, look out. I'm always adding six here. That's interesting. So can you see the easiest way of writing the nth term? You could say mu n is what? Uh, mu n take one plus six. In other words, to get a term, the easiest way here is to spot that you're going up by six. So every one is the preceding one plus six. Okay, now here's a challenge for you. We've just said that is really hard to keep working with because if you wanted to term way up there, you've got to do all the terms in between. All right, here's a challenge. Can you write mu n as an explicit formula in n? In other words, this, uh, let's say, one, two, three, let's go to this one. This is the fourth term n is 4. Can you say, what do you do to n to actually get up to 24? Okay, well there's a hint here. You might start with 6. So every term consists of 6 plus what? How many adding on of 6's do we do to get up to 24? 6 plus, there are three gaps there, 3 times 6. Oh, that was for 20, that would be for the fourth term. So let's make that mu 4 is the first one plus 3 times the difference. Mu 5, this one, the fifth term is the first term and it's got another difference here another so that's plus four times the common difference hey something's happening here the fourth term has three lots of the differences added the fifth term has another lot of the differences added uh oh I think, can we scrub that out and can we say, what's now? What's this one? We have just done it. Mu n is the first term plus one less than the number of the term, lots of six. Do you get it? Because if you're in the third term, you've only had to add on two sixes worth. That would work, that would work. Let's go and check it for, uh, what will we do? Let's say we check it for the fifth term, which should be 36. Let's go in here then, the fifth, uh, the fifth term, uh, sixth term, sorry. So the sixth term should be six plus five lots of the difference, which is 36. Hey, it works. So it is possible to sometimes, well, here it is, the easiest spotting here of the formula was the recursion method. See how it was built up from the one before. But it was possible to look closer and actually make up an explicit uh, statement in N so that you could go straight to any term. So mu 50 would be 6 plus 49, lots of 6. So that is explicit. So let's just write those down now and say this is a recursive formula. You're, re you're working as if it's recurring every time. A pattern is recurring. And this is an explicit statement. And the explicit is advantageous because you can go into bigger terms without the ones coming before. Do you get it? We're trying to work with uh, analysing sequences of numbers and seeing where they're all going. It's quite exciting uh, pu sort of puzzle work now. Do you want to do something? OK, we'll come down and have a go here. So we just put those there now. Um, so I find the first five terms and the 50th term of each infinite sequence defined in questions one to eight. 
infinite. So it says you, you can keep going. You keep, keep, keep putting uh, bigger and bigger ends in. Okay, so the first one's got using the notation AN, BN. This is the one that the IB likes the most, the mu N symbol. Uh, be careful with this formula. That's a fairly complicated formula. So um, see how you go. What we're doing here is if it's explicit, and where does the explicit one stop? I think these are explicit, aren't they? And these are recursive. Okay, so um, you can go on and uh, find the first five terms and the 50th term. Now I'll give you a hint. I don't want you to use the recursive formula to get the 50th one. Um, down below there are the solutions and I'll show you, as Pearson's does on the TI, I'll show you on the Casio of how to actually get uh, the 50th term and get the Casio to actually calculate all the ones in between. So please do not do the 50th term here because you'll be there all day. O omit the 50th term here and uh, I'll show you uh, with technology. Okay. Uh, all right, so have a go, pause the presentation, and uh, down below here, I'm just going to show you the answers, and I'll go through uh, the setting up of the Casio to do the recursion uh, method. Okay, here we go, here are the answers then, down here, and uh, they haven't got any working there, they're just show, uh, saying we have to substitute n equals 1 to 5 in the given formula um, and then the, the 50th term uh, they put on the end uh, as well here uh, so mu 50 is on the end okay now in question 5 to 8 as I've said here they have um, in these fully worked solutions uh, pictures of the TI uh, I'm going to do it with the Casio here and uh, we don't uh, sequential mode is how the TI deals with it uh, the Casio deals with it in recursion mode. So um, I'm going to do uh, which one here? I just go back up. It's um, AN take 1 plus 2. Uh, no, it isn't. It's 2AN take 1 plus 5. Uh, that's the fifth problem. 2AN take 1 plus 5. That is um, number 5. The first, the recursion one. So that's what we're going to try and get the calculator to do. So let's have a look at the screen uh, shots here. So over here on the first one, come over here. Can you see we need to go down there to the second row by ch hitting um, um, eight on the keypad or scrolling across to recurve for recursion. Okay. So uh, up comes the window recursion and you can see it set up as AN plus 1 connecting back to AN uh, rather than AN connecting back to AN take 1. So it's the same idea, isn't it? This is the next term and if you hit, uh, if you choose this button down here, F4, F4, then you get this window. And uh, you can see here, that's the button you're going to need. Because we're going to, with the Casio, change this formula to AN plus 1 equals 2AN plus 5. It's the same idea, isn't it? Just a different notation. This is the term we want, N plus 1, and N is the term before. So it is exactly the same relationship as n and n take one. Okay, starting to get the idea of this jargon. A n is a term, a subscript n take one would be the term before it. If you call a n plus one the term, then a n is the term before it. Okay, so now we need to have a look at that button. So come across to the next window, and what have I done here? I've entered 2 and then I've selected 
an by hitting F2 and then I've added 5. So you need to uh, have uh, this an in the window but you first of all enter 2 and then you select an, add 5. So you need to enter that. Um, Alright, so uh, uh, when you've entered that, uh, I, I've got it missing here, we need to uh, then exit and uh, come and set the calculator up so it goes to the table setting it's going to display all the answers in a table so now this is a setting for n plus one our starting value however is a naught so you've got to watch this now so the first term is a naught and uh, then uh, it will start at naught because if you put naught in n it goes to a1 and then it will end at 49 which is actually n plus 1 would be the 50th term. Okay, so uh, just watch that. Uh, this is a bit interesting. Uh, the actual first term in this sequence is 3, but on the Casio you'll enter that as a naught, and then start with n of naught, which will give you 1 over here, and so on. So be careful in watching that. So if you hit uh, execute then, uh, come to this window and hit table by hitting F6 it will create this table so you first of all see that and if you scroll down you go down to 49 for n which is 50 the 50th term as we've set it up there because we started a naught um, and that was three so that was really our first term so the 49th term here is really the 50th in our sequence so the answer is this what is that well, that's a, a technology notation for 4.5 by 10 to the 15, a very big number. So in any exam or whatever, you must never write the tech version of this. It should always be written as that. The E here, of course, means an exponent of 10. So it's a shorthand way of saying 10 to the 15, and you must always do that. Okay, so there we have it, and uh, you might uh, um, enjoy now thinking about some practice, practical situations where uh, you've seen sequences and patterns of numbers. Well, for the moment, uh, it's cheers from me, and I hope to catch you in um, part two, which is uh, arithmetic sequences, a particular type of sequence. Cheers for now.